Amen. It's so good to see all of you here. I know you're still giving your offerings, and, and that is just fine. When you can, you can open your Bibles, and we're going to read in just a moment from, uh, let me just remember we're gonna, where we're going to turn, 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4. Hey, uh, you know, I, I've had a book out for several years. We had to reprint more because we ran out. And so I updated the cover. It's called You Are Made for More. Just wanted you to know that we have that available. Uh, how many of you don't have never read my book, You're Made for More? You'd like a copy? Okay, I'm going to give that to you right there. <laughs> yes, to you. You come on down and get it. And they are in the bookstore. You can order them off of Amazon, off my website, the church's website. But it's an awesome book. <laughs> uh, toot my own horn. <laughs> God is good, isn't he? All righty. You know, I, I feel an incredible anointing tonight. And as I was praying before the service, I, I just feel like, and I know the Holy Spirit spoke to me, that there's an anointing to heal and deliver people from depression tonight. Amen. And even uh, a, a chronic depression. You know, I've been through seasons of depression because of things I've been through. But, you know, th that, that's one thing. It's another thing to have chronic depression. And I just felt like the Holy Spirit said that, that, that he's, the anointing is here to heal that. We're going to pray about that. And also just the anointing to, for inner healing. Some of you have been, you know, you, you don't feel whole. You don't feel heal, uh, healed or whole or, or right inside of you because of things that have happened to you and things that, have, that people have done to you. But God wants you to know that's not who you are. And there's a time to let go of those things and let go of the, the, the things that have happened to you and realize that that is not who you are. That was the enemy trying to attach himself to you but you are whole in Jesus Christ and you are right with him. Amen. And he loves you and he adores you and, and he approves of you. And so I just want to put that out for you. And as you listen to the message, let it encourage you. And then at the end, we're going to pray. Probably going to go out of here with a dancing song tonight. I feel like dancing. I just, I told Peter, I said, give, give me a dancing song. Okay. And so he did. Let's, let's start by praying. Father, we just thank you for your anointing. We thank you that you're present with us right here. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you know every need, you know every concern. And Father, I pray especially for those who are discouraged tonight and feel weary in their mind, in their bodies, in their spirits. And I just thank you that tonight you are lifting them up and that you will encourage them and strengthen them and give them revelation in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hey, let's say welcome to our online viewers. We're so glad that you've joined in. Amen. So glad that you've tuned in. We're always glad to have you as a part of Lakewood. So 2 Timothy 4, we'll read in just a moment, but tonight my title is this, When Everything Seems Against You. What, have you ever felt like that? What do you do when it seems like everything is against you and everyone is against you? Well, we're going to talk about that. And I, I can just tell you the good news up front. It's not over until God has the final say. <laughs> Amen. And so I, I want to read these encouraging words from the Apostle Paul. And in this passage, we learned that Paul was going through some tough things himself. And just to give you a little context, he was imprisoned again. He was in prison many times and, and for preaching the gospel. He was in Rome in prison again. But this time, he didn't have the freedom that he had before. He was in a cold dungeon. And uh, it was under the rule of the emperor Nero, and he hated Christians. And so he was chained in this cold dungeon like a criminal. And it was for preaching the gospel. And during this time, he wrote these words to Timothy, who was his son in the faith. And he wrote them not only for Timothy, but in expectation that he would send these letters to the church in Ephesus. And so with that in mind, 2 Timothy 4 verse 9, do your best, Paul says, to come to me quickly, Timothy, for Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in the ministry. Let's skip down to verse 14. 
Alexander, the metal worker, did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him for what he has done. And you too should be on your guard against him because he strongly opposed our message. At my first offense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. Now that's the bad news right there. You can see the predicament that Paul was in. And sometimes we think that these men and women of, uh, of great faith were superhuman or superheroes, but they were just like you and me. And, and they had feelings and they had temptations and they had hardships. And when you look at Paul's life, it seems like everything was against him. Like everyone was against him. And maybe you can relate to that. He said, I was deserted by Demas. Alexandra, Alexander did me a great deal of harm. He's opposing me. When I was on trial, no one came to my defense. I felt all alone. And he said, send Mark to me because I need Mark. You can hear the cry of his heart. I want to ask you, maybe has someone deserted you? Has someone mistreated you. Maybe a wife or a husband walked out on you. Maybe you feel all alone. Maybe you feel all alone because you have so many secrets in your life. You don't want people to know what you're going through or what's happened to you. And you just feel so isolated and alone. Maybe you have great needs like the apostle Paul. Maybe your, your boss is not treating you right. Maybe the bank wants to close, uh, wants to, uh, to uh, foreclose on your home. I don't know what it is you're going through. But I'm, I'm going to tell you this. I'm so glad that the Apostle Paul did not stop writing there. Because he goes on to say, let's pick up in 16 again, verse 16. He goes on to say, after all that happened at my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. But, say but, but the Lord stood at my side and he gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and that the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth and the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and he will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen powerful words. I'm going to say this again. The Lord will rescue you from every evil attack and he will bring you safely to his heavenly realm. To him be the glory. To him be the glory. Amen. You see, at first, Paul stated the facts. This is where I am. This is what I'm going through. But he didn't stay there. He ended with the truth. You may, you may have some negative facts and negative circumstances right now in front of you, but you also have the truth of the word of God. And let me tell you something, truth always triumphs over the facts. The supernatural always overrides the natural. Amen. Amen. When all hope, when all hope seems gone, keep your faith in God. Keep your faith in his unchanging word. Because let me tell you something, God is your strong tower. He is your refuge. He is your fortress. He is your hiding place. He is your provider. God said, I am that I am. Whatever you need, that is what I am. Amen. When everything seems against you, when everyone seems against you, God is always for you. You've got to remember that. I want to give you four truths that you can take away from this scripture. Four things that Paul said that will encourage you and help you in the place that you're in right now. So when everything seems against you, Paul said you can know, number one, God is always standing by your side. I mean, that's just the bottom line. You're not alone. You will never be alone. I mean, it seemed like Paul was alone in that dungeon. He was facing a legal trial all alone because no one stood with him. And yet in his aloneness, aloneness, he declared, though no one stood with me, the Lord stood by my side. Oh, that's powerful. God was with him in that dungeon. He was with him in that trial. He was with him when everyone deserted him. Someone said this, when you have nothing left but God, for the first time you become aware that God is enough. God is more than enough, amen. If you were down to nothing, God is up to something. 
you know this story, and I've told it so much, but it means so much. Uh, you know, it, it's our life. But Kevin and I tried to have children for eight years, and the doctors worked hard with me, and and they they did the best they could, but they finally told me they couldn't help me, and so because it was my problem in my body, and we Kevin and I we had uh, prayed and declared the word of God over and over, but it. It, it came to a place where we were down to nothing, seemingly. And I'll never forget, I got on my bathroom floor and I began to pray and I began to say, God, you know, Kevin and I, we've done all we know to do. We've had the surgeries, we prayed, we declared the word, but our trust is in you. And I, I sincerely said that day, I said, God, if I never have children, I will be content because I have you. And I'm so grateful that I'm alive and I'm so grateful that I have Kevin and I'm so grateful that I'm called into the ministry. But God, what I was saying, God, I'm down to just you and me and I'm going to be happy with you and me. And, and not long after that prayer, you know the story, God moves supernaturally and we adopted our twin girls and three years later, we adopted our son, Christopher. And so God did a mighty miracle for us. Our girls are 21, Christopher is 18 right now. But let me tell you something, when I felt that everything was against us, God was standing by our side. When we were in the doctor's office and got that report, that bad report, God was standing by our side. He was with me on the bathroom floor. He was with me when I didn't understand. He was with me when I was hurting and weeping over it. He was with me when I was declaring the word of God. And I found out that when I was down to nothing, God was up to something big. Amen. God was up to something big. I want to encourage you tonight, when you think you're all alone, God is always standing by your side. You can hold on to that truth. If you feel like you've messed up your life, God is still standing by your side. He's waiting for you to yield to him, to realize that, that he is all you need, to surrender to him, to say, God, I don't know what to do, but my, my eyes are on you. God, I don't understand why this is happening to me, but I trust you. You know, so many times we feel disconnected from God. We feel, I, I've had people tell me, I don't feel like God is talking to me. He used to talk to me more. I don't feel like God is with me. And there is that time, there are seasons when we may not feel that we are, we are connected to God. But let me tell you something, just because we feel that way doesn't mean that we are disconnected from God. The fact is we can never be disconnected from God when he lives inside of us. Amen. Because he is in us. And, and it's Satan is the one that would like you to feel alone and, and abandoned and hopeless. But God, he's not hiding from you. He is near to you. He lives inside of you. And you've got to learn to believe that though you may not hear uh, his voice or you may not see him working, that he lives inside of you and he is standing by your side. The Bible says Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. When you don't know what to do, always know that God is standing by your side. Amen. When everything seems against you, you can know this. Number two, God is giving you strength. That's what the Apostle Paul said. I loved how he said it. He said, in all that I went through, God gave me the strength I needed. God knows what you need. He said, in this cold dungeon, when I thought I couldn't make it another day, God strengthened me. He sustained me. See, if you are weary tonight, I declare that you're not going to go home the same way. I feel that so strong in my spirit. Some of you are weary in your thoughts and your mind. And I'm telling you, God is going to lift that from you. And he's going to give you the strength you need as you surrender to him and quit trying to work it out in your own strength. So many times we stay awake trying to figure out the problem. We try to figure out the solution and we worry throughout our day. And, and we just wear ourselves out mentally and physically. Sometimes we can't help it. The circumstances wear us out. But listen, as you look to God all through the day, ask God for his strength. Say, God, give me the strength I need. Give me the energy I need. Sustain me through this, and he will always do it. Isaiah 40, verses 29 and 31. It says, he gives strength to the weary, and he increases the power of the weak. Do you feel weak tonight? God is increasing your power. Even you grow 
tired and weary and young men stumble and fall, but those whose hope is in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and they will not faint. I declare over you right now that God is imparting strength into your body, into your mind, and into your spirit. I declare right now that he is filling you with joy by the Holy Spirit, that he is causing you to soar like an eagle through this valley that you're walking through, that you're going to run and not grow weary, that you will not faint, you will not quit, and you will not fail in Jesus' name. Because God is increasing your strength. He is increasing your power. Isaiah 27, five says, take hold of his strength. We've got to take hold of his strength. Listen, when you can't believe that God can. Jeremiah 31, 25 says this, God gives strength to the weary and joy to those who sorrow. God will strengthen you, and not only that, he will restore your joy. And, and that's another thing that God put in my heart, that some of you have lost your joy. You've lost your laughter, but God wants to restore that joy. He wants you to laugh. He wants you to enjoy life. And, and, and don't let the enemy steal your joy. God is turning your sorrow into joy and your mourning into dancing. That's why we're going to do some dancing tonight. When everything is against you, number three, God is delivering you right now. You say, I don't see it, Lisa, but he is. He's working on your behalf right now. Paul said he will rescue you from every evil attack and he will bring you to safety. I like what Psalm 107 uh, 30 says, God will bring you to your desired haven Whatever it is you're believing God for, you have to know that right now, God is fighting your battles for you. You have to know that there is an unseen realm and we cannot live by our, just our five senses. We have to live by our sixth sense and that is faith. Our faith says, God, I don't see it, but I know you're working. Our faith says, God, we don't, we don't see the word working, but we know it's working because it's alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Our faith says, God, we don't feel like we're going to make it, but we know your word says that we're going to make it. You see, faith can reach out into a, the supernatural realm and bring into existence the, the promises of God. And you've got to know you cannot live just by your five senses. You've got to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. We put faith in his word. And so when, you, when you've done all you know to do, just imagine God standing by your side. Imagine that he is fighting your battles for you. Imagine a host of angels defending you and walking around you and, and with you before you and behind you. Imagine what God is doing in the supernatural realm because it's very real, amen. And God is working on your behalf. God is saying, cast your cares upon me because I've got this. I've got this. You do your part and let me do the rest. Trust me in my timing and I will deliver you. He will deliver you from every evil attack. From every evil attack. I'm going to preach that until you get it. He will deliver you from every evil attack. Sometimes we think that it's people that are problems, but it's an evil attack from the enemy. And God said, I will deliver you from every evil attack. God is a faithful God. Amen. God is not a man that he should lie. He's faithful to his word. Let me read this scripture to you out of the a message Bible. It's so good. It's 2 Corinthians 1, 8 and 10. And it's Paul speaking. We don't want you in the dark, friends, about how hard it was when all this came down on us in Asia province. It was so bad, we didn't think we were going to make it. We felt like we'd been sent to death row, that it was all over for us. But as it turned out, it was the best thing that could have ever happened. Instead of trusting in our own strength or our wits to get out of it, we were forced to trust God totally. And that's not a bad idea since he is the God who raises the dead. <laughs> that's pretty good. 
And he did it. He rescued us from a certain doom and he will do it again. And he will do it again. Amen. He will rescue us as many times as we need rescuing. God is faithful. God is faithful and he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able to bear. But he will, with the temptation, make a way out. God can make a way where there is no way. Amen. Why don't you just make this bold declaration with me right now? Say this, God is delivering me right now. He is fighting my battles right now. He is bringing me to my desired haven right now. Amen. You can have that confidence. Hallelujah. And I, I want to add this. Don't worry about your enemies or the people who are mistreating you because God will take care of them. And I, I think we can learn a lot from Paul when he talked about Alexander. He said he's opposed me and he's uh, opposed and did him great harm. But you notice after he said that, but he said the Lord will repay him for what he's done. In other words, Paul wasn't going to focus on Alexander. He was reporting, stay away from Alexander. He's not a good guy. But he said, I'm not going to focus on what he did to me. I'm not going to be bitter. I'm not going to be unforgiving. Hey, God's going to take care of him. And that's the attitude you have to, you have to take. Don't allow bitterness and, and hurt to take root in you when people mistreat you and hurt you because that's the enemy's plan. You just have to know like Paul, God will take care of those people. God will vindicate you if you quit focusing on them. I'm telling you, when you focus on them and what they did to you, you will not move forward. But when you just say, God, you take care of them. I'm not the judge. You're the judge. They hurt me. I forgive them, but I'm moving forward and they are not going to keep me from moving forward. Amen. Think about it. If they hurt you once, it's bad enough. But if you keep holding on to it, they hurt you twice and they keep you from moving forward. So you have to let that go and let God take care of them. When everything seems against you, Paul said, number four, God is going to preach a message through you. Yes, he is. Say, I can preach. Remember what Paul said? He said, God stood by me. He gave me the strength I needed and he delivered me. Why? So that the message of the gospel might be fully proclaimed. You see, God has a message that he wants to preach through you. He has a message that he wants to preach through your life, through the miracles that he does in your life. Amen. God doesn't waste anything, the good, the bad, or the ugly. He just doesn't. He will turn your situation around for your good and for his glory. Psalm 40, verse 1 and 3, I'm going to read it to you. It says, I believe these are the words of David. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. And he set my feet on a rock and he gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth and a hymn of praise to our God. You know, I read that and I thought sometimes we're in a pit, but sometimes we're in a slimy pit, aren't we? I mean, it's the worst pit we've ever been in. And you may feel like you're there right now. And it may look like you cannot get out of the pit, but God said, I'm going to lift you up out of that pit. And I'm going to set your feet on the rock and I'm going to give you a new song to sing. I'm going to give you a new message to proclaim. And it's not going to be nobody knows the trouble I've seen. It's, it's going to be God, you're an awesome God. God is an awesome God. He says he will set your feet on a rock. That's a firm place. That's a new place. That's a stable place, a place where you cannot be shaken. God wants you at a, in a place of stability. God will cause your mess to become your message. Amen. It's a part of your story and it's a part of your destiny. I mean, who can keep quiet after God has done so many great things for us. We've got to tell somebody, amen. It becomes your message to further the gospel. I think about how I, I learned to preach when I was going through the worst trial of my life years ago. And it was during that time when I was hurting that I 
develop such a compassion for hurting people. You know, when you've gone through it, you have a compassion for others. And so I, I, I had developed this great compassion for hurting people. And I began to pray with people and encourage them and, and share the word with them. And then I just took it a step further and I began to teach them the word of God, anything that God was showing me. And, and one day my father asked me, he said, Lisa, I want you to preach for me in the main sanctuary when I go to India. And I, I stepped out in faith and I did that. And I've said it often. I did it with fear and trembling because I was very nervous, but I knew God was doing something in me. And God, I realized when I look back during that time, that trial, the worst trial of my life, God was preparing me to preach and I didn't even know it. It's amazing. You never know what God will bring out of you because of the trial that you're going through right now. He is birthing great things in you. I want you to remember that. I'm spitting and preaching today. Just wipe it off. God will use what the enemy meant for evil to train and prepare you for better things to come. He will put a new song and a new message in your mouth. Hey, your future looks bright. It looks bright. So I want you to be encouraged today. I want you to be encouraged today because God is standing by your side. Don't ever say again that God is silent. Hey, you think he's silent? Pick up the word and let let him talk to you. Just let him talk to you. Don't underestimate the power of the word. Don't walk around all day listening, trying to listen for some big audible voice because that's not how God works. It's not, it pick up the word every day and let God breathe into you. Let him speak to you. When I touch this Bible, it's like I'm touching God. You wanna touch God, you wanna feel God, pick up the word of God. I like, I love that I can read on my phone, but the phone doesn't feel like God to me. I'm sorry. Pick up. And I read my, I read my phone here with you sometimes, but I'm saying every day, pick up this word because God will speak to you. And if you think God is not speaking to you or seems silent, just start reading the word of God and you'll see that he is speaking every day and he makes his word fresh for you. He causes you to see things that you need for that day. For that day, he'll give you revelation. So don't ever say again, I'm, I'm getting on you a little bit. Don't ever say again that God's not with you, that God's not working, that God's not speaking to you because he is standing by your side. He lives inside of you. He speaks through his word. And the more you listen to him and follow him, the more you will learn to hear his voice in your own spirit. Remember that God is giving you the strength you need. He knows exactly what you need. That he is delivering you right now, even though you cannot see it. He is working right now on your behalf. And and he will preach a message through you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the, the worship team to come back up. And we're going to, we're going to pray just a moment. That's all I had tonight. Did that help you some? I, I hope it did. Let, let's, let's have the salvation prayer first and then we'll, we'll pray a little bit. Let's bow our heads for just a moment. We never end a service without an altar call or a salvation prayer here at Lakewood Church. And if you're here today, if you're watching online and you have never asked Jesus to come into your life, to be your Lord and Savior, this is an opportunity to do it. I'm going to pray with you in just a moment. If you don't know if you have peace with God, if you died tonight, you don't know where you would spend eternity, I invite you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't have peace with God, this is the time to receive peace with Him. And I'm going to ask you another question. If you're here and you've known the Lord, but you've been away from Him and, and, and you need to rededicate your life to Him because you've been in sin, you've done things you shouldn't do, and I'm not going to ask you what they are, but you know you need to rededicate your life to the Lord, I want you to answer this call also. So right now, all over this building, if you want to, if you want to pray the salvation prayer with me, just throw your hands up real quick. Throw your hands up real quick. Amen. You want to rededicate? your Amen. 
Thanks. So many hands. Bless you, bless you. You can put them down. I'm going give, to give you one more chance. Is there somebody else that you didn't raise your hand and you need to raise your hand? Put it up real quick, real quick. Okay, let's pray. I see that hand. Bless you. Let's pray this together to encourage them. Say, dear God, I come to you right now just as I am. I'm a sinner and I know it. I need your grace. I need your forgiveness. I'm a mess, but I come to you just like I am. And I thank you, God, that you receive me and you accept me and you love me the way I am. And I I repent of my sins right now. And I ask you to forgive me. I'm truly sorry. And Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. I'm tired of steering my own life. I need you to take the wheel. And I receive you now. And I receive your forgiveness. You have forgiven all of my sins. And I believe that by faith. That you will remember them no more forever. In Jesus' name. I boldly declare on October 16th that I am now a child of God. And I will serve you, Jesus, all the days of my life. Now I ask you, Father, heal me, deliver me, set me free from any bondage in my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give them a good hand clap. (laughs) Woo! Thank you, Father. God is so good. The ushers are going to give you a book by my brother, Joel. If you did not get one, please pick one up. You know, I I just want us to spend a a minute in prayer and then let's end with this song. But uh, why don't you stand up? Y'all aren't in a hurry to go home yet, are you? I'm going to ask you while we sing this song, just get a little free. Let's do a little dancing if you want to. But if you just, if any of you, you, you relate to what I said, that you need freedom from chronic depression or you need inner healing in your life. And you just want to come down here as a statement to say, God, I receive healing. Come down here and worship down here. I may pray over you in a minute, but just come on down and let's worship together. But right now, as we sing, I believe the chains are breaking over your life. The depression has to go in the name of Jesus, that that deep sorrow that is held on to you, that it has to go in the authority of Jesus, that God is uprooting those things that you have held on to, those negative labels in the name of Jesus, that He is healing you from the inside out. And you are not going to live with scars. You are not going to live as a partial half person you are going to be whole and you are going to be free and you're going to be happy and you're going to be full of joy by the Holy Spirit I declare it in the name of Jesus I declare it in the name of Jesus I declare it in the name of Jesus we uproot those negative thoughts in Jesus name We uproot those lies in the name of Jesus. We uproot those soul ties in the name of Jesus. And we declare, Father, that every person under the sound of my voice is free, free, free indeed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you are giving them a new identity, Father, that they will see themselves as a child of God, as your child, Father. They will not see themselves as the wounded one anymore. They will not see themselves as the hopeless one anymore. They will not see themselves, Father, as the suicidal one anymore. They will not see themselves as the victim anymore. They will not see themselves, Father, as the one 
who did wrong, Father, because they were mistreated, because they were hurt. They took on that hurt and they said, is there something wrong with me? But that is a lie, Father. There is nothing wrong with them and they will not see them. I uproot that lie. I uproot that negative identity right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for revealing to your people the roots, the root or the lie or the label that they have accepted. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, for your healing anointing that is sweeping over your people. Even those watching, Father, your healing anointing. Father, we thank you for it. We praise you, Father, for it. We receive healing. We receive healing. We receive healing, Father, in the name of Jesus. Just begin to say, I receive Jesus. I receive Jesus. I receive Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your healing power. Thank you, Father. Let God, let just God do a work in your heart right now. Just shout out everybody else and just worship Him. Let God do a work in your heart. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Father, I speak joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that they have joy by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that is it rising up in them right now, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for restoring the joy, for restoring their laughter, for restoring their smile in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that they're gonna be so joyful that everywhere they go, they're gonna spread joy, Father. They're gonna be so joyful, even though, Father, they may be in the worst trial, they're gonna be so joyful. And they're gonna be shocked that they're so joyful, Father, because there's only a joy that you cannot give. Father, the world cannot give it. Only you can give it, and Satan can't take it away from us, Father. And we thank you for it. I, I just speak joy over you in the name of Jesus. I release joy into your life. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy come upon your people, Father. Joy come upon your people in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I want you to, I want you to, if this applies to you, you do it. Put your hand on your heart and say, tonight, I'm letting go of the negative labels that people have placed on me and that I've placed on myself. I repent, Father, for speaking evil of myself, for saying critical things about myself. I'm your, cre I'm your creation. Who am I to criticize what you have made? I ask you to forgive me. And Father, I release the hurt that has been done to me. I release the harm, the words, the deeds, the evil deeds that have been done to me. That is not who I am. I recognize that it's the enemy's attack upon my life. But now I know I'm free from him and I am not who he says I am. I am who God says I am. I am not the abused one. I am the whole one. I am the whole one. I am not only a half of a person. 
I'm a whole person. Just because things have been done to me doesn't mean I'm stained. My life is over. I'm not good enough. I am whole in Jesus, completely whole. I'm valuable. I'm worthy. I'm worthy to have good relationships. I'm worthy to be blessed. I'm worthy to have a good job. I'm worthy to be a good father. I'm worthy to be a good mother because you made me worthy. You made me worthy. I am your righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Without you, I'm nothing. But with you, I have everything. I will not speak against myself. I will declare your word. I will speak what you say about me. And from this moment on, I'm gonna grow spiritually. I'm gonna get healthy. I'm gonna have a better self-esteem. I'm gonna look in the mirror and think good things about me. When I'm on my job, I'm gonna think good things about me. In Jesus' name. God is just washing some of that old junk out of you. Out of you, he's washing it out of you. Uh, too many times we think, we think we are intertwined with what happened to us or with what people said to us, but that is not true. Listen, the Holy Spirit is in you. The Holy Spirit is like, it's, 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 uh, it, the metaphor is for oil of the Holy Spirit. Those things just have to slip right off of you. It's like oil, they have to slip right off of you in Jesus' name. So now that you're free, are you ready to dance? Let's do it, say I'm free. Amen. This is all I can be.
Good night.